my fashion dolls. It is Winston Wednesday, March 20th, and welcome to an all-new episode of Style by Stevie. Our very special guest today is no stranger to the acting scene. He's new to the dollhouse, and I'm excited to have him here. I can't wait. But before we get into that, it is spring. It is officially spring. Yesterday was the first day of spring, but it feels great to be here. Now, remember I was telling you guys when I did my interview with Robert Barham that me and my mom ordered the same jumpsuit? Well, this is the jumpsuit today. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's definitely colorful. It wouldn't really, but it matches my nails almost, if you guys can see. Shout out to my brother's k Tooks at the k Tooks spot. Make sure you guys go and check him out. So I'm going to go ahead and send this live to Jawan so that we can get right into this interview. I'm super excited about today's show. We are going to have some fun. And I hope you guys are all doing wonderful out there as well, too. It's been a very beautiful week thus far. We are officially closing out March. We've got one more week left. I'm also going to be dishing on some of the hair products that I use because I know you guys are like, wasn't your hair this color yesterday? It was, but it was a different length. It was a little bit longer. So I'm going to be dishing on some of the hair care products at the end of my conversation with Jawan that I've used on my hair because I know you guys are wanting to know what does she use on her hair to make it so beautiful. So without further ado, let's welcome my very special guest, Fashion Dolls, Jawan Coffee. Hello. Hey, I guess I need to turn this, huh? It's vertical so we can see you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I guess I need to turn this. How are you? Now we can see you. I'm doing wonderful. Welcome to the dollhouse. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure to have you here. So before we kick off this interview, how has 2024 been for you so far? Um. It's been a year. <laughs> uh, it, uh, I think someone said the other day, um, my Friday is just going all wrong because it keeps turning out that it's Wednesday. Um, <laughs> and that's how 2024 is feeling. It's, it's been a lot. Um, some good things, of course. Um, unfortunately, uh, some tragedy just struck on Sunday night. So, um, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Whatever it is, I'm sorry. And sending you my love and prayers, whatever it is. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. Let's get into it because you are a fresh new face. And when I reached out to you for this interview, you were like, why does she want to interview me? Because I've sent you some of my previous interviews to check out and you've seen some of the guests, you know, who I've had on. Right. So I reached out to you because I wanted fresh new faces this season. For me, spring is a new start and starting over for me means fresh new faces. Of course, I've had big names on the show in the past Absolutely. and this season as well too, but I said I wanted to give other black actors, fresh new faces, a platform where they can showcase whatever it is that they are launching, whether it's a film a television program, wherever that may be. Right. So that's why I reached out to you. So let's get into your story. Okay. Tell us about yourself and how did you get your start into acting? And for you, at what age did you discover that acting was something that you wanted to do? Right. Um, I'm actually a bit of a late bloomer when it comes to acting. Um, I've been in music most of my life. Um, started singing when I was about six years old, performing with, you know, church choir, school choir. Uh, I actually went to governor school for choral music, um, that kind of thing. I was, of course, in R&B groups and, you know, cover bands and stuff in the Raleigh area. Um, so I started with music. Um, I did do some musicals in high school, but didn't really give a lot of thought to it. It still stemmed out of music, you know. I just happened to be acting at the same time. Um, and I got a call in maybe 2013 uh, from a friend of mine, uh, Jamal Farrar, who's uh, also an actor and uh, videographer, that kind of thing. And uh, he said, someone's looking for an actor to fill a role. And I said, um, okay, I haven't acted in 12, 13 years, but you know, we'll see. And, uh, you know, I went and went to meet the writer and director. It was a mother-daughter team. Um, it was actually uh, 
that was doing the mother was the writer daughter was a director um and i went to audition for them and they liked it so i i played the role of jesus a modern day jesus <laughs> um and then i auditioned with uh jtp over in raleigh and um got the role as was i was the uh backup for cole house in uh ragtime and it just started rolling from there from that point it was like you know one show after another um in a theater realm and it was back to back to back to back i'm thinking like 2016 or 2017 i was doing four and five shows a year um and so uh, a good friend of mine, one of my closest friends, I call her my little sister, Lily, she went to UNCW and uh, has been living here in the Wilmington area for about 12 or 13 years now. Um, she was like, you should come down here. You know, there's film stuff going on, you know, studios are here. You should come down. I was like, I'll make it, check it out. You know, I'm coming visiting everything. So um, I did. Uh, I actually signed up to do some background work and that kind of thing. And ended up coming in town, fell in love with the area, um, fell in love with being on film, um, and been at it ever since. You know, I've done a few uh, independent films, I've done background in a few television shows and that kind of thing. So um, that's kind of where things, how things got to where they are now. Um, hopefully the major studio uh, will be back up and running sometime soon. <laughs> um, with them selling and everything, of course, all that kind of uh, stopped for a little while. Um, but uh, the, as far as I know, the new owners and the new company is uh, on the way back in um, and about to get things kicked back off. So hopefully we'll be, you know, back up and rolling here uh, as far as the major films and everything, major TV shows. Um, but I'm also, like I said, I do independent films and stuff. I have a lot of fun with, you know, um, some of the local producers and, you know, that kind of thing here, too. So, um, yeah, that's where we are. <laughs> so let's go back for a minute. Go mm -hmm. from doing music, going to being in different R&B groups to now acting, transitioning over to acting. Mm -hmm. Who are some of your inspiration for music and acting? And if you could collaborate with anybody, who would that be? Um, definitely Jamie Foxx. Um, that is one of the first ones that comes to mind because he's so multifaceted um he's able to do a lot of different things as far as the acting he's comedic he can do the drama um but he also you know does music has a few hit songs from the early 2000s um, a lot of people don't remember his album from the early 90s when he was on in living color <laughs> um so you know jamie's jamie's definitely one of those guys who i kind of look at and go okay we can you know we can spread the love around um Musically, I've always been a big fan of Tank, and then finally seeing him do some acting and stuff, I was quite impressed in the uh, new edition uh, movie and everything. So, um, guys like that, you know, um, for the most part, it's, it's always been kind of separate. I have my musical influences, I have my acting influences, um, but if I had to, you know, zero in on people who were doing a little bit of both, um, Tyrese as well, um, you know doing a little bit of doing the music thing and then able to convert that into an acting career as well. Um, and now, you know, to a point where people know him more for acting than they do for his music. Yes. And we're seeing a lot. I mean, it's been there. A lot of artists are balancing out both with doing mm -hmm. music and then doing acting as well, too. So which thing you prefer the most? Which do you like? Um, um, so I enjoy live audiences. Um, I, I'll say music, um, but I enjoy musicals, um, which is a combination of the two. Um, I, I just enjoy the way the live audience feels. I love, I have my, I have my loves on both sides, you know. Um, like I said, with the performance thing, it's the energy of the live audience is feeling them and knowing they can feel me and I can feel their responses and hear their responses. Um, but then too, I like film as well because it's so fast, it's so fast paced and so high octane. I love that. I love that turnaround. I love being able to go in and, you know, take a cut here and turn the cameras around, do another cut. And it's just high octane all the time. It's always going. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say the live performances is honestly my personal favorite just because you get that instant feedback, instant gratification. And you be.
be able to connect and get intimate with the audience as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what, are some, what are some skills that you've learned that have helped you gain? What are some skills that have helped you gain to help a performance be effective as a musician? Um, as a musician, learning to work your space. Um, that was one of the big things that I had to learn. Um, I wasn't really good at it starting out. I would kind of plant myself and just do my thing. Um, learn to learn to use your space, learning your space. You know, um, anytime I like we performed, uh, I did uh, the color purple here in Wilmington last November, uh, October, November. And one of the things I always do, and you know, I did it there in Thalion Hall is I go out, I lay on the stage. I just get a feel for my space. I walk around the stage from end to end. I get a feel for where things are, where they're going to be, how lighting is going to be. Uh, you know, what sources I can count on as, you know, okay, I know this is going to be here, so I know I have about this much space there. And it allows me to utilize my space. And when you utilize your space properly, you really are able to engage your audience more fully. Um, and that's really what it's all about with live performances, engaging the audience, getting them, you know, to focus in on you, having them, you know, um, just entertaining them, just having them uh, fully focused on what you're presenting to them and what you're giving them. Um, so, yeah, that's like one of the major things. Um, I also had to learn to, you know, pace myself. Um, I get out there and, ha and be this big ball of energy and anxiety and four songs in, I'm winded. <laughs> you know, um, so definitely learning to pace myself, learning to take my time, um, learning to enjoy it. You know, people go out and perform all the time, but they don't necessarily enjoy being in that space. They don't they don't take it in. And I literally, you know, try to take my time and enjoy it. I try to enjoy, you know, the audience as much as the audience is enjoying me. Um, so those are some of the things that kind of, you know, strengthen me along the way as far as music is concerned. I'm, I'm pretty sure you caught my interview yesterday with gospel icon um, William P. Campbell. He talked mm -hmm. about that as well, too, as well as going on stage. He's on tour right okay. now. And he's going to be going on tour all the way up until next month, April. So right. he talked about how stressful and straining it is to be on stage those yes. long hours. So it's about having longevity. And this is why you see a lot of singers and dancers train and rehearse mm -hmm. hard. Another guest that I had on, you remind me just a little bit of him because he does it all. I mean, he's done The Color Purple as well, too. He was Harper on The Color Purple, Bo Emerson. Um, okay. Bo has recorded music. He has done Broadway. He's done television. Mm -hmm. He's done film. I mean, he's done it all. So right. I want you to check him out because he talks a little bit about it as well, too. You see him go behind the scenes and rehearse yeah. at rehearsal and do warm-ups with his mm -hmm. voice. And I mean, yeah. this is incredible. So to be a performer, to be in this business, it takes longevity and strength yes. and manpower to be able to do this. And yes. trust me, I know what hosting this platform, because I've been doing it since 2014, mm -hmm. right after when I graduated from high school. And when I first got in, I was very cocky. I was very arrogant. It's just like, she thinks she's better than everybody. She, thinks she knows it all. <laughs> but as I've gotten now in my 30s, I'm just like, okay, girl. What we gonna do here? Now it's time to put this car in park. We gonna have to. We gonna have to take a break here. We gonna have to slow it down because I'll be doing shows, still doing shows, still doing interviews. I one show I'll never forget it. I did it with a sinus infection, and mm -hmm. after I did that, and because it's, you know women, we have the power and strength to keep going. We could have a fever. You don't. You won't even know. So right. after I did that last show with that sinus infection, I said that was my last show right there, and yeah. I took whole week off i regretted it later and i was trying to be all pretty you know how we women try to be, be all pretty <laughs> and smile but baby when i tell you i got through that interview i was in pain i in said pain. never mm -hmm. will i ever do that so i've learned to listen to my body and yep. that is something that me and william talked about yesterday so mm -hmm. being a performer it takes a lot it, out of you because you're in high does. demand and you have crowds of people coming to see you mm -hmm. and perform so for you, how do you gear up for a performance when going out on stage and doing it live in real time? Um, so I have to, like I said, I, I end up with a lot of nervous energy. Um, so I, I take a lot of time to meditate and try to refocus it. 
Um, I don't, I don't, I tell, you know, young, young performers that I work with, like, you don't want to get rid of your butterflies. Your butterflies will get you through, but you have to control them. You have to learn to use them to your advantage. Um, so, you know, I try to meditate and I'll try to kind of get to myself. And like I said, I might walk out on stage while everybody's in the back kind of getting dressed and stuff. I'll be there a little early so I can get out on stage and I'm just out there by myself, just wandering, just refocusing, re, re, uh, uh, redirecting that energy, if you will. Um, because like I said, you know, that the butterflies are good, um, but you have to control them. Um, so yeah, that's like one of my main things is just kind of, you know, getting that energy going in the right direction. Um, uh, and what you spoke on earlier, as far as rehearsal times and the long hours and everything like that, you know, for me and, and I'm sure many other artists and performers, you want to get to a point where you don't have to think about what you're doing. You know, I don't have to think about lyrics. I don't have to think about, you know, steps and things like that while I'm performing. So that when I do get to a point where I can kind of ad lib or something like that, I can really enjoy it and I can really make the most of it. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we we practice, but then we, you know, kind of slack off and that kind of thing. And you're so busy trying to remember words and trying to remember changes with the band and that kind of thing. And you want to get to a point where you don't have to think about those things, because the less that you have to think about those things, the more you can really put into your actual performance and really enjoy the performance yourself. Um, so those are a couple of things, just being fully prepared and being able to, you know, uh, direct that energy and that kind of thing. Um, you know, and like I said, meditation, um, just kind of sitting with myself and, and going through things in my head and, you know, really just being in my own, in my own vessel, if you will. So, what is it about music that makes you passionate? Um, you know, that is a very difficult question to answer. Um, I, th I think for me, it's literally tonal quality. Um, I love to hear harmonies. I listen to music for little bitty nuances in the background. I don't, you know, I listen to, of course, I hear the lead singer and the you know, background vocals and that kind of thing. But I zone in on, you know, ooh, there's a string patch back there up under everything that, you know, is really supporting this. Oh, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a really soft hi-hat and it's pushed over, panned over to the right-hand side only. Oh, that background vocal is, you know, there's three voices back there, but somebody, dub, you know, they dub, dub somebody and they're moving around a little bit. They're doing something a little different inflection here and there. You know, it's the little nuances like that that really, like, get me going when it comes to music. Um one thing I used to, you know, I used to preach a lot when I was producing music and when I would have artists come over is, you know, don't do don't don't show all your all your cars at the beginning of the song because it gets boring. The song will get boring. I don't care how nice a run is. If you do it six times, it's boring by the third time. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, place those things in, in specific spots. Do very deliberate things with it and those are the things that i listen for what are those deliberate things that are done after verse number two what's the deliberate thing that's done differently between the two verses that after the two verses is done a little different what is the difference in the note progression in the first verse and the second verse what is the difference in those two verses their note progression and that bridge what is the difference there did they reverse it did they change the order you know so it's those little nuances like that that really that really like grab me and that's why i said like i think it's just the the tonal quality just you know listening to the quality the sonic quality of the music and the the tonal quality where are your notes placed at where are your little nuances placed what are the things that you're doing to keep my attention as a listener because the human ear gets bored very fast it gets tired it gets bored and the more you fill up that space with the faster it gets bored and tired so you know those little you know, i don't know if you ever noticed like certain songs start out very simple it may just be a piano and a vocalist and then as they progress into the verse you start get strings and then by the time the chorus comes in, you're getting a bass and you're getting drums and that kind of thing. And what you're doing is you're keeping the ears entertained. You keep making the ear listen for something new. 
every single time something is added. It's little stuff like that. You know, those are the things that really like get me going. And I'm going to go back for a minute because you said something people, you know, the ear gets people have such a short attention span and it's important mm-hmm. that they can focus. Mm-hmm. And when you're listening to music, like you said, so I even kind of catch it too. Certain things stand out. Mm-hmm. It could be the piano, it could be a violin, it could be an orchestra. But of course, I listen to the vocals as well too. And you recognize right. certain. So those are just a few things that stand out to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna shift gears here because you guys know that this is a fashion platform. How would you <laughs> define your personal style, Joy? Um, extremely laid back. <laughs> Um, extremely laid back. I am, you know, I'm, I am a comfort first person. So, you know, it can be design or whatever, you know, anything from Versace to Levi's and everything in between. I'm comfort first. I don't care what label is on it. Is it comfortable? You know, am I going to feel good in it? Am I going to feel confident in it? You know, that kind of thing. You know, that's that's always my go to is comfort. Um, so everything outside of that is like, eh, if that's what you guys want me to wear, okay. But <laughs> I'm I'm extremely laid back, extremely simplistic, you know. Um now, don't get me wrong, you know, when I'm on stage, when I'm performing and when I'm doing these shows and stuff, I love my costume. Love my costumes. Um, I love to, you know, I think little Richard said it one time, I love to put it on, you know, I love the costumes. I love the, the shirts, the colors, you know, seeing the different cast members and how the colors work together. Um, I did a stage play at Wild Little Theater a few years, I think it was 2017 or 2018 called Three Little Birds. Um, and it was written by Bob Marley's daughter, Sedalia, uh, Marley. And I played Duppy, um, if you know anything about um jamaica duppy is a ghost um but it was about you know as i said it was called three little birds so i was a bird ghost um but they actually used like the the skull of they they crafted this humongous skull of like a raven and then sat like a top hat on it and uh they placed uh i think it's a kai seeds i think that's what they are They're, they're actually very poisonous um, but they're seeds, and they made a necklace out of these seeds for me. And I had this long black trench coat, nails painted black. I had the silver and purple and black makeup down my face. Um, had like uh, I actually I have a friend who's a uh, eye doctor, and I got her to order me red contacts. So you know, I I love to dress it up. I love to do the costuming. I love it. Um, but on my day to day. T-shirts and sweatpants. <laughs> Even for me doing this platform, a lot of people think that I go out sometimes and I look like this. The only thing for me that's my accessory is my hair. And you guys know the hair is my brand. <laughs> beauty, <laughs> beauty, makeup, hair, nails, that's a part of my brand. That's a part of my aesthetic. So right. you will not see me without those things. Other than that, sometimes if I'm going out for brunch, then you'll see me dress it up a little bit or shopping mm-hmm. or whatever. But from time to time, if I'm going to the grocery store, it's a romper, maybe a hoodie, and uh, the clogs. Right. The clog shoes that everybody is wearing. <laughs> so those are the things that I love. But when I'm doing this show, oh, I'm definitely going to bring the drama. The hair has to be on point. The makeup has to be on point. Thanks to Melanie, uh, my makeup artist and beauty contributor, who always gets me right. Yeah. Um, Everything has to be in tip top fashion because if not, if anything is out of place, the audience, the viewers will catch on to that. And that's what I've learned growing into this business. Because when I first started, I had a, everybody knows it, the signature blonde mohawk. But (laughs) I said, you know what? We're going to do something different. We're going to change it up. So me and my mom, we consulted with the professionals. (laughs) And there was certain things I had to X out. Like, no, I don't want to try it. I don't want to try it at all. I want something different. So I went from black to blonde to red. I green, I shot people with green hair back in 2023. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a wild card. You don't know what you're going to get with me. I live for the drama. I live for color. Yeah. And yeah. I just love dressing up. It's the beauty yeah. of being able to change and morph into somebody completely different. So that's right. what I love about fashion for me and style. 
Yeah. So for you, what is your most funny fashion moment? Have you ever had a fashion moment? Because I've had one of my guests. <laughs> he was going on stage, and while they were in lineup now, his pants ripped, and he had to continue <laughs> on. So what is a funny fashion moment for you? Um, I'm trying to think. Probably, probably getting stuck in clothes when I'm trying to change. <laughs> um, I've had uh, a couple shows where I've had to actually change like on stage because the changes were quick changes or they were built into the show. And uh, <laughs> we're trying to change and I had like a dress shirt and, you know, taking buttons loose. And I could not get the sleeve buttons loose, could not get one of these buttons loose. So everybody's like getting out of their shirt and I'm like still halfway in this white shirt. I end up having to like rip it over my head like a t-shirt and pull it off and buttons go flying. I pop buttons off and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and like after the fact they were cracking up at me because they saw me stuck in the shirt like this trying to get it off. <laughs> but I haven't really had a lot of uh a lot of fashion comedy. Um I've had some had a Something like that, that little malfunction when I did play Cold House. Uh, we used a uh, starter pistol um, for us, uh, Cold House's, uh, it was a Cold House soliloquy. And <laughs> I pulled the starter pistol and it's stuck in my belt loop. And I'm supposed to shoot three times out into the air. The first shot goes off as I get it out of my pants because it was stuck in my pants. <laughs> Oh, that was that was scary and hilarious. Luckily, it was a starter pistol. There was no actual shot in there, but you know, the thing was supposed to be shot out here, and it went off like right here. <laughs> so, For me, I, I've had almost a similar moment, but instead, it was a trip. Now, mm -hmm. it was one season I wore this tool. You know, if you guys watch Sex in the City, Sarah Jessica Parker, you know she wears the over the top mm -hmm. ball gown. Mm -hmm. I wore one like that on the show one seat. And before I went on to come live, I almost tripped. And it was right in the spot where I'm sitting right here. Yeah. So thank God nobody saw it. <laughs> thank God nobody saw it. But if the, you guys would have seen it on live, it would have been hilarious in real time. So I caught myself and bounced, I played it all, bounced right real back in real time. So these things happen, y'all. Yeah. In real time, and you have to, you know, the audience will catch on to it. They understand it, they get it, but you got to go right back. The show must go on. Got to so, keep going. Absolutely. <laughs> so, for you, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you grounded to keep doing what you do? Um, just the desire to do more. Um, I've always got a desire to do more. Whatever I'm doing, I want to do it bigger. Whatever I'm into, I want to know what the next step is. Uh, whatever I'm, you know, doing at the moment, if I'm, if I'm playing, you know, a certain type of role, okay, I want a bigger role. I want to see how how do I get to a bigger role? How do I, you know, if I'm performing in front of, you know, 300 people, how do I get in front of 500 people? Um, if I'm with, you know, this uh, this local group here. How do I get this local group on a statewide group on a national level? You know, um, so it's always it's always for me a desire to be bigger. Um, one of my teachers, when I was one of my professors in college, um, he said, uh, you know, coming from you know from a little small town, Tarboro, North Carolina, and uh, he said, coming from that small town, you were kind of a big fish in a little pond, and you know, you got to the city. Um, the time I was in Durham and you find out, you know, the pond is a lot bigger here, <laughs> you know, so you've got to grow. If you want to be the big fish, you've got to get bigger. Um, so, you know, it's, it's that kind of mentality like, okay, well, if, if this pond is larger, that means it's time for me to get bigger. You know, and I, I want to do more. I want to add to it. I want to add to the resume. Um, my resume right now is to the point where I only include certain things when I fill it out because I've done so many things um but i want to be able to exchange those things out you know um i treat my my acting uh, and that resume just like i do my my job resume you know I, I cater the shows to what i'm applying for 
you know, um, if I'm applying for a more classic show, then I put more classic shows that I've done on there as representation of my experience. If I'm doing something with a more modern edge, I put some more modern, you know, shows up there that I've done that kind of fit the narrative and that kind of thing. So, you know, um, it's just a desire to do more, to do it bigger, to, to have more, um, to see more. I want to, I want to see different places. I want to visit these places. I want to go and film out in Arizona and, Utah and out there, in, you know, in the middle of nowhere and stuff. I want to go film in Colorado in the mountains. And, you know, I want to see L.A. and Hollywood and all of that, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just a desire to, to do, to see, to to have more, you know. Um, if there's one thing I've learned um, since crossing 40 is uh, life is short, you know. Um, I'm getting to the age where I'm starting to lose friends, losing classmates, um, things like that, you know, health issues, you know, um, just, you know, time itself, you you know, not to be a, a Bible thump or anything, but, you know, no man knows the day nor the hour, you know. Um, we don't know. We don't know when, when that number's going to get called. Um, so, you know, to do as much with the time as possible is the goal. I would love to give two very special shout outs to their beautifully diverse fashion and my brother, my beautiful brother, Scott Valentine, who's been a diamond in my life. And I'm so thankful for him. He's always encouraged me in the conversations. You guys have seen me literally break down when we had when we had our conversation back in 2021. This would have been season 15. And we were still doing things how we're doing them now. But he gave me some gems, and that's powerful because you never know. He said something, and that was give people their flowers while they're here. And last week, a few weeks back, you seen Ricky Taylor, who's a good friend of mine, give me um, my flowers, and I just started crying because he was pouring into me so much because we give so much of ourselves that we don't even realize sometimes we're so blinded because we're so focused on giving back and helping people it's natural to us it's human nature mm -hmm. so we are so blinded by it that we don't see people pouring into us and giving us our flowers yeah so when he came on and started just pouring into me have people who pour into you as well to give people their flowers while they're here because what Jawan just said is so real because we've lost so many people from 2023 to 2024 mm -hmm. it has been a wild journey for all of us yes and life comes at you very very fast unexpectedly when you least expect it and trust me th my 30 years of living i've lost relatives i've spoken about losing my sister and how painful that was for me and mm -hmm. i know when june 29th which would have been her birthday rolls around it's bittersweet for me and my family and my mom even asked do you think about her sometimes i said yes I've talked about it on the show. I try to be as transparent with people as possible. But yeah, those memories will always be there and give back in plentiful waters, not dry wells, my friends. Absolutely. That's beautiful. You can wear yourself thin, giving so much of yourself. It's just like, what about me? I need to pour into myself as well, too. Right. So to a lot of people out there, making sure that you are pouring into yourself and making sure that you keep your cup full and make sure also that people are pouring into you as well that's the key thing absolutely absolutely so we are about to have some fun here with Jawan, and then we're going to take some questions from the audience fashion dolls and then i know you guys are wondering because my hair was longer yesterday today is medium length, so we'll get to what i used on my hair at the end of our convo with Jawan. but we're <laughs> going to do two things one of them is turn the tables and then we're going to do something called the rapid five where Jawan has to tell me five things he can't live without it can be family friends your favorite drink your favorite football team it can be your favorite laptop tablet tv whatever you want so <laughs> but turn the tables let's break it down with turn the tables turn the tables is where my guests get to ask me questions whatever they want to know fashion beauty how did i get started with the black? whatever they want to know i'm an open book and they can ask as many questions as they want to. So we are going to start off with the rapid five. Now, Jawan has to tell me five things he can't live without. But before we do that, let me read my brother Sky's comment. 
sometimes we can give too much of ourselves into others that we forget to replenish and to allow others to do that for us. I'm I'm a I'm a victim of it. I, I give so much to myself and then it's like, how come you 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 know don't really care about people giving back to you? It's the selflessness in it. It's the selflessness. I don't expect anything back in return. I, I don't. And my mom has always raised me that way to be grateful and thankful. Sometimes there are people out here who don't have the things that we have in life. You know, some people don't have a brother, they don't have a sister. Right. But you go out here and you create bonds and strong friendships with people like my brother Scott, who I've known for a very, very long time. And there's so many others, Island Yankee, K Tooks, Jay Evans, Tony. Uh, it's the list goes on and on. You guys hear me talk about them every day on the platform. My best friend Felicia, who I went to school with, these people are pivotal in my life, and I can't thank them enough. I don't ask for anything in return, but being surrounded by people who love and care for me, a hundred percent, is the best blessing and the best gift that anybody can have in the world, and that can't put a price tag on anything. That can't put a price tag on anything. It's so many things out here they have prices, but you can't put a price tag on love and people supporting you. One hundred percent, you just can't. It's it's unbreakable. It's okay to receive those sisters. It's not about expectations so much, right? And beautifully diverse wants to know before we get to the, um the rapid five, how do you balance career and time for yourself? Or is that for me or Jawan? Beautifully diverse. Let me know before we get into this rapid five. While she's typing, we're going to go ahead and get into the rapid five, and then I'm going to come back to you, uh, beautifully diverse. Jawan has to tell us five things he can't live without. Ooh. Um, my mama. <laughs> uh, my son. My phone. It's connected to everything. Um, my hearing. And uh, sleep. <laughs> we need our eight hours. That's pivotal. <laughs> and so I, I, don't, I don't sleep very well at all. So I, I actually have narcolepsy. Um, so I don't sleep at night very well at all. Um, and daytime. I'm drowsy. This is a real thing. Um, so I like the effort to get good quality sleep is a le legit like day to day part of my life. Absolutely. We need our eight hours. And I think with this, when we had this spring for time change, daylight savings time, that threw everybody off. It's just like, okay, did I miss an hour? Yep. So even my mom was asking me, I, I even told her and gave her the heads up, like, yes, it's going to be a time change. And I think that was Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I think it threw everybody off. You're yeah. doing things at a later time or you notice yourself doing things. It's like, wait, my appointment was this time or my meeting was this time. And it's just <laughs> like, you're going in an hour early. So that happens. Yes. Yeah. 100%. All right. <laughs> so. We are going to turn these tables, all right? And this is where my guests get to ask me some questions, all right? So I'm going to pass it on down to Jawan here, and Jawan is going to ask me as many questions as he wants. And right now, it's like, okay, you setting yourself up, girl. I'm putting myself up in the hot seat so you guys can find out whatever it is, the new viewers you want to know about me. Take it away, Jawan. Um, I'm not really good at interviewing people uh i don't think uh, i guess the uh, the i guess the first thing that kind of comes to mind is what is your inspiration like what what led you to doing what you're doing now because you said you've been on this journey since about what 2014 like after high school and everything right so what, what pointed you in this direction what was the what was the driving force I would have to say my mom, I'm surrounded, and I said this yesterday on the show, I'm surrounded by outspoken, uh, powerful women, powerful mm -hmm. black women, and my, my mom's sisters, my grandmother, my mom, of course. Um, I notice how outspoken they are, and I think I might have picked that up from my mom, because my mom is a Libra, October 7th. 
I'm a Scorpio, October 31st. And I think I might inherited some of her traits. We and you guys have heard that adage: we are our parents' children. Absolutely. Well, I know I went back and I watched some of my interviews, and I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm starting to do things and sound a lot like my mom. This sounds like something that she would say or something that she would do. And I kind of have to catch myself because it's like looking in a two-way mirror, mm -hmm. having the same reflection, and we look just alike. Sky's talking to my mom, so we sound just alike on the phone and everything. <laughs> so I would have to say my mom has been the driving force for me to do this platform. And before our parents have our reservations about us going into the entertainment business, whether it's oh, yeah. acting, music, or hosting a platform, my mom was sort of reluctant about it at first. She's like, I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. But then seeing the attraction, the people, the guests, everything, she started to come along. And it was one day we were talking and sitting in the kitchen and she just walked up and she said, I'm very proud of you. So I'm just like, wow, this is why I'm doing this, to make you proud, to make you happy, yeah. to show you that I have a voice. Because I've always wanted to host a talk show. Mm -hmm. And I've known that ever since eight years old. Okay, And I would line up the dark and lovely boxes in my um dad's room and i'm just like okay i'm a host a talk show i want to look just like one of those girls on the box and i want to host a talk show and fast forward 20 years later going into my you know my high school years right after high school before it was called weekdays topics where i would just talk about celebrity pop culture and we would do it every day at 11 o'clock on facebook and I would interview people. We shifted it up and I started interviewing my friends who were music artists and actors. And yeah. I said, we got to have a name for it. It's got to be catchy. So I'm just randomly sitting down and I came up with Style by Stevie. Not weekdays topics, but Style by Stevie because I love fashion. And it kind of throws people for a loop because that's the first thing they think of when I reach out to them for interviews. They're just like, fashion? Why should you want to interview me? Why? I don't know much about fashion. <laughs> But it's just like, no, no, no. Style by Stevie is a lifestyle. You guys know I live in luxury. I indulge in luxury. I indulge in pouring into yourself and self-care. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more than that. So my interviews, the conversations, I know people love music. They love movies. They love entertainment. They love pop culture. They love hearing people's opinion and aspects on life and different things. So mm -hmm. Style by Stevie. So yes, it's it's sort of like, you don't know what you're getting, but when you watch, you sit down and you watch, it's like, okay, this is what she's doing. Got it. So that's how Style by Stevie came to me. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm not that good at this. <laughs> uh, okay. First serious heartbreak. What song is playing on the radio? Ooh, first serious heartbreak. It would have to be the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Why does it hurt so bad? Like, oh, I heard the song in Waiting to Exhale, and I just go back and I listen to that song. Yeah, it does, does some things to me. So that would be the first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. Oh, um, so as far as, uh, you know, as you asked me earlier, you know, about my influences and, and being able to do both music and uh, acting, who are some of your influences as far as, you know, television hosts, you know, that kind of thing? Well, definitely uh, Ricky Lake has been one of my favorites. Ah. Um, another one would be Rolanda Watts. I'm loving mm -hmm. Drew Barrymore. I'm loving Jennifer Hudson and what she's doing. Sherry Shepard is one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, the ladies of the real daytime. They then there's no longer when I found out that that show was canceled. I'm just like, this was my show because I used to go to my sister's house every day at twelve and watch it. Even could you know coming home from school or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was those are what some of my influences, and you can kind of see that within this platform. Yeah. But it's one person who's doing it, and I've had co-hosts doing it with me. So uh, another one of my influences, I would have to say Tamron Hall is another one. Okay. Definitely. So those are some of the women that I look up to when hosting this platform. Okay. Good. 
Good deal. Um, I think that's about it. I really don't have, really don't have much. <laughs> we have it, fashion dolls. And I, I'm going to go ahead and answer beautifully the versus question, and then Joanne, you can answer too. How do you balance career and time for yourself? It is definitely a balance, and I've said this time and time again before on the platform that you have to be willing going into the entertainment business you have to be willing because you're in high demand you're always on the go you know performances uh photo shoots mm -hmm. so many things you you're you're in high demand you have to be able to balance out okay this is this this is the spotlight and this is family time and when it's my downtime, when I'm not on here, when I'm not logged in and doing style by Stevie, my downtime is with family. I have a yeah. nephew now, and you guys have heard me talk about him. So when I'm not doing this platform, days off when I have a guest counsel or anything, I'm typically writing, creating. I'm in my bag. I'm focused. I'm pinning things down, creating. Mm -hmm. things. So those are things that you can do in your downtime. <clears throat> And that's how I kind of take time for myself. Writing has been therapeutic for me. So it's an honor to be able to write and be able to do what you love as well, too. But on my days off, that's what I'm typically doing, spending time with family or going out with my mom whenever she invites me to go, place, go places with her or spending time with family. We just had a cousin come down not too long ago. So it's always great to make sure that you are giving time to people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I don't. <laughs> it is actually something that um that I work on to this day is creating a good balance. Um a lot of times I I'll be honest, <coughs> excuse me. I'll be honest. Um I have a hard time saying no. Um my no button doesn't work very well and I put myself in positions where I got too much going on. Um, and so, like I said, it's one of those things that I work on to this day because I want to help everybody. I want to be there for everybody. I want to do things for everybody. Um, so it is something that, that I, I work on to this day. Um, one thing that I have taught myself to do, um, that I've, you know, taken very seriously in recent years. Um, and like I said, you know, things change once you hit 40 years old, you have to reconsider and reevaluate how you do things because your body will tell on you. Um, so one thing I had to do is be very deliberate about taking time off, taking time away from everything. If it's nothing but 24 hours of silence, I turn the sound off on my phone. I turn, you know, everything off and I just lay around for a day. If it's nothing but for one day, it's just me. And whatever I decide to give my attention to, there's no requirements on me. Um, I'm one of those people, you know, my relaxation is either fishing or coloring. You know, if I can't get out to the water and go fishing, I'm upstairs with color pencils and a coloring book and I'm coloring. You know, those are my two ways to kind of diffuse. Um, so I, I got very, very deliberate about taking me time. Um, it helps me. Granted, like I said, I just still need to work on the actual time management. Um, but it does help me with when I get backed up or when I try to take on too much, I know I've got some built in rest. <laughs> yes. And beautifully the best is that's the question. That question is for, is to the both of you. And thank you. You're welcome, love. You are so <laughs> welcome. And what's next for you? Because you've talked about music. You've talked about acting. What is next for Jawan yeah. in 24? Um, so I'm actually in the process of working on an independent film right now. Uh, we filmed a couple days last week. Uh, we got some more days coming up in the next week or two to kind of finish up. Um, that movie is actually about an R&B group, so it will have some live music to go with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of this, I think this pollen has gotten to me with this open window. But um, that actual that movie is going to have some. Some, some music to go with it that we're going to go in the studio and record um, because it is about an R&B group um, based on based on some true events and kind of some you know fictitious stories to go along with it. Um, but it's, it's a really good feel good story. It's kind of a comedy with a little bit of drama mixed in. 
Um, I told the writer it's like Soul Man meets uh, Five Heartbeats. <laughs> um, so it's, it's it's good fun. So we're working on that right now. Um, got a couple other things that I've got I have my eye on as far as you know um, projects that are coming up. Um, I know that uh, Tech Moje here in Wilmington is trying to do uh, the Wiz, I believe, in June. Um, so, you know, I spoke with uh, with the artistic director there, Kevin um, Levi Green, a couple of days ago. Um, speaking of which, um, I'm debating right now whether I'm going to go to the actual award ceremony this evening. I was nominated for uh, Best Supporting Actor here in the Women Theater area um, for my performance as Mr. In the Color Purple. Um, but I told Kevin I may not go to the award ceremony tonight just because of everything that's been going on this week. I said, you know, I may go, I may not. It just depends on how I feel. Um, like I said, Sunday is really messed my whole week up. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's all I have on the agenda that's, you know, kind of set in place right now. Um, I have been putting my feelers out about recording some new music. Um, I've talked with some friends of mine about, you know, doing some live performances, um, some family members um, who play, you know, instruments and things like that. I've spoken with them as well. So um, I think music may be on the horizon, maybe making a return this year. Um, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm sitting in kind of playing with right now is finding some time to, to make some music in 2024 because I haven't. I haven't actually released music in probably eight years. You know, I've done some, you know, I've done some work with other artists. Um, I've, you know, I've done background vocals, live performances with some other artists. I'm um, Carlita Duran, Heather Victoria, um, up in the RDU area. But um, for me to actually release my own music, it's probably been, it's been eight or nine years now. So um, something I wouldn't mind, you know, revisiting and just seeing how it feels if it's nothing but a single or two just put it out there and let people hear you know what i have to offer and see where it goes but um but yeah i think i think 2024 is going to have some music involved somewhere some way um i think that's one of the things that i'm really going to try to put in the agenda but uh yeah as far as um you know film and everything in stage like i said um tech Moje is supposed to do the whiz in june uh, and then, uh, like I said, I'm working on one project now. I've got another project that I'm, you know, I should know something about soon. Um, so yeah, you know, um, try to stay busy. <laughs> Trying to stay busy. And I can't wait to see what's on the horizon for you. I know it's going to be even more amazing and great things. So before we let you go, I know you guys are waiting on the secret on what I use on my hair for today's. <laughs> We're gonna get to that, but. For you, before we let you go, what are some words of encouragement that you would like to give to other actors and performers out here? Because I'm going to go back for a minute. In the part of our interview in the beginning, you said you get a little nervous. Too. And even for me, I get mm -hmm. nervous before my interviews. So what are some gems or advice that you would give to other artists out here? Um, be tenacious. Mm. In all that you do. Um, you never know who's watching. You never know, know who you're inspiring. Um, you never know who's looking at what you're doing, contemplating offering your opportunity. Um, so be tenacious in everything. Um, always, if you're gonna do something, do it all the way. Um, I see people take on engagements and it's like, oh, well, I didn't really wanna do it, but they kept asking, then don't do it, you know? If you're going to do it, though, if you say you agree to do it, then give it everything that you've got, because what you don't want to do is look back on things 10 years later and say, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my biggest advice to anybody who's uh, considering entertainment, anybody who's already in entertainment and trying to take the next step, uh, anybody who's been in entertainment, things just haven't fallen into place yet. Be tenacious. You never know when the opportunity is coming. I always see um, the story of the the elder lady who played in uh, Black Panther. And yeah. she was something like, what, 88 years old when she started acting? Wow. And now, at I 
I think 91 or 92, everybody knows who she is, you know, because of that one scene in Black Panther and Black Panther 2, those two little scenes. Everybody knows who she is now. She didn't start until she was 88, you know. Don't let anybody tell you you, you live in a time capsule, you know. Or it's too late for you because ageism right. is a thing in this business. Everybody mm-hmm. wants young and and new and fresh. Yeah. But it's just like as you are in the business a long time, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna age along yeah. with your business. Like Marla Gibbs, we, we know her as Mary on two thousand seven. Yeah. She yes. is still active. Yes. That's living proof. It's never yeah. too late to go after whatever it is to set your mm-hmm. soul on fire. And that's one thing I love about acting is, you know, I used to say it all the time, there's always a role for somebody, you know. There's roles for kids, there's roles for grandparents, there's roles for aunts and uncles, there's roles for the parents, there's roles for brothers and sisters, there's roles for random cousins and stuff. There's a role for every age bracket, you know. So specifically with acting, you should never get discouraged. Um, And music either. I mean, most of our greatest musicians performed up until the day they died. James Brown performed until the day he died. Prince was, you know, unfortunately he wasn't on tour, but it was because he got sick. But at the time, he was supposed to have been on tour. Michael was gearing up for another tour when he passed away. Um, all of these artists, you know, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, God, I can't think of her name right now. Um, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm looking at her face and can't think of her name. But, you know, needless to say, um, all of our artists, all of our music artists, they perform up until they literally, like Frankie Beverly is about to retire for health reasons. You know, George Clinton, same thing. He just retired for health reasons, you know. But, you know, well into their 60s, on up around 70 years old, they're on stage and they're still put it on. Smokey is still on stage gyrating. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's age is, age is a figment of the imagination. You know. Absolutely. Age is something that, that we created to kind of give us an idea of what our body should and shouldn't be doing at certain time spans. But to be quite honest with you, there's there's always like there's there's nothing stopping you at fifty or sixty from pursuing a dream. Nothing in the world. Absolutely. And today's final thought, and I'm gonna let you guys know what I use comes from Dr. May Jameson. So I think you hit the nail on the head because that's exactly my final thought for the day. You must be over here looking at my cue card. <laughs> because <laughs> Dr. May Jameson, she says, she says, never be limited by other people's limited imagination. Mm-hmm. That means don't sell yourself short. It is never too late. And in this business, a lot of people think, oh, well, you started off very late. You shouldn't be doing this at this age, at your big age. Just listen. It is never too late to follow your passion never. or whatever sets your phone on fire. Never. If you want to do music, it's never too late. Patti LaBelle is one of my favorite singers. And mm-hmm. I think she's, what, 79? She's still out here performing on stage. Mm-hmm. Sounds exactly the same she did when she first started. Mm-hmm. So that's living proof right there. We have a lot of living legends out here. Diana Ross is still living. So yeah. smoke. Robinson is another one. Uh, Gladys Knight, Gloria Gaynor, uh, just put out a documentary. So the list goes on and on. It is never too late to follow your passion of whatever it is that sets your soul on fire. I started off right after high school in this business. And when you start off young in the business, you don't know anything. You know, you're a little arrogant in a way. But as you progress, as you grow older into the business, uh, you learn more about yourself. You discover more about yourself. So that is mm-hmm. living that is a living testament. And that is today's final thought for right. fashion dog. So before we close out, I know you guys are wondering what does she use on her hair? How does she get her hair to stay so perfect? I'm about to reveal my secret products over here. <laughs> so you guys know that I'm big so I am big on hair color. I'm big on shine. Uh, our girl, Taraji P. Henson, and this is not sponsored, but <laughs> I know you guys are wondering what she used on her hair recently at the NAACP Image Awards. I have the shampoo So Lengthy, which is a strengthening and lengthening shampoo, and it has black castor oil and Jamaican and biotin. Biotin is to strengthen your hair. So this is what I use on my hair, and that's why my hair comes out so perfect. 
Now, when I'm curling and blow drying as well too, I would use the hot commodity, which is also Taraji P. Henson as well too. For my sleek, because I know you guys are like, how does the hair stay so sleek? How does it not move? I use L'Oreal's Frizz Killer Serum. So those are just a few of my products that I use. And I also use Sebastian and a little bit of Paul Mitchell so that the hair will stay in place. And the curls look like this. They stay in packs. So you see me with that swoop, you already know it's a problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> but those are a few of the products that I use on my hair. And you guys can go anywhere to CVS, Walmart, or wherever to pick them up. But Taraji P's products are pretty good. No, I have not tried Beyonce's products yet. I want to. I'm hearing mad reviews about it. So those are a few products that I use to keep my hair intact because my hair is relaxed underneath. And if you know, you know. So yes. <laughs> but absolutely. And Jawan, for you, a bonnet, I sleep on a satin pillowcase. And my mom, she uses the bonnet. I use a satin pillowcase. And the reason why is because either or if it's silk, it prevents hair breakage. So yes, I sleep on a satin pillowcase and that stops my hair from breaking and everything. And I also oil my scalp as well too. So those are just a few tips that I use to keep my hair intact. So yeah. But my hair that, will not look like this tomorrow. So yeah, get a look at it <laughs> because tomorrow is probably gonna be a different color. But you were gonna say, Juwan, I'm sorry. I was gonna say uh, uh, that bonnet question came from one of my oldest friends <laughs> who just popped in. Uh, my boy Nate from back home. He and I have been friends since uh, freshman year in high school, so like maybe ninety five, ninety six. Yeah. I'm here to be reunited with your classmates just from <laughs> our conversation. <laughs> So yeah, it's funny to see him pop in here. Um, as that is one, one of my oldest friends, <laughs> and he actually uh, he decided to uh, go with locks here recently. So that's probably why he's asking about the bonnet and everything like that and the products because uh, he actually uh, he's been locked for I don't think it's been quite a year yet. So yeah. Yeah, a long time, very long time. <laughs> yes, what I would recommend for the locks is there. I see a lot of people that start if they have like locks, they do the lock socks. So mm. definitely protect your hair, but save your hair because I know for us as black people, our hair damages so easily. So protect mm. your presses, protect protect your locks definitely. So. <laughs> Where can everyone follow you, Jawan, and check you out? Um, I am on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter. I'm pretty much everywhere. I usually am more active on Instagram and Facebook than anything. Um, but it's all the same. It's just my first and last name, Juwan Cofield. So, I, I'm, I, all I use is my first and last name everywhere, so you can always find me. There you go, Fashion Dolls. And joining me tomorrow, we have d -Wit. So make sure you guys tune in tomorrow and for it. And also, this interview will be uploaded to Style by Stevie Daytime. Head on over there and subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified when all of my new interviews are up. And this makes show 581, y'all. We are halfway at that 600 mark. So thank y'all so much for supporting and tuning in each and every day to see the guests, to see everything. Um, also... This will be saved on IGTV so you guys can go back and check it out as well, too. And I have Jawan tagged and be on the lookout from the reel, the highlight for this interview as well. So we'll see you then. And Jawan, it was a pleasure meeting you. I had such a great time. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Jawan, take care of <laughs> everyone.